morning, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion and Scott Michaels. And we are coming to you from Route 66 in Amarillo, Texas. You can see in the mural behind me the uh, Cadillac Ranch, so we might as well go check that out before we head out of town. Days with Jordan the Lion and you all and Dearly Departed begins right now. Pretty good mural here. We stayed at a place called the Atria that was actually really good. No complaints. Oh, there it is. Should be a happy stop. They got a smiley face flag out. Open since 1937, the Beef Burger Barrel. Get your burgers out of a barrel here in Amarillo. Not quite open yet today, but I heard they have some great fried okra. Supposedly the best burgers in town too. We'll try it out next time we're here in town. We just couldn't pass up a stop to see this. This place is pretty cool, Scott. Did you see this? The archway that you walk in, then you have the state of Texas right here on the ground as we go in. We are at a place called Texas Ivy, and it's the original Route 66 Visitor Center here in Amarillo. Look at that. They did in the Ivy. I love it. Kind of interesting, if you look at the water tower in the background, that even has Route 66 on it. They are sure proud to be a part of it here. I love that. And then as you walk in, they have all these images in the concrete of like homes and barns. Cool. We're getting closer. I'm guessing this was an old Sinclair by the look of it. That's fantastic. Like I said, it's called Modogs now, but they're definitely keeping that kitschy feel. They've got the old truck with their name on it. And then look at it from this angle over here. This really caught our attention off the side of the road when we were driving by it. I love the architecture, just so cool. Yep, looks like it was a Sinclair. Back to Route 66 we go. This is Mimi's Cafe, but Scott and I both noticed, being Midwesterners, this is an old A&W root beer stand that they've repurposed, I love it. This is a great mural. I mean, this really is awesome to me because it has basically where we were the last couple of vlogs, which is up in Eric, Oklahoma, and it shows Roger Miller's from there. And then as you continue on, if we would've went up to Pampa, that's where Arlo Guthrie's from. Alice's Restaurant, and then down here in Goodnight is Charles Goodnight. Bob Wills was down here in Turkey. So now we're past all of that, and we are here. The cache for gold and jewelry, that's where this is located. Don't see any more famous people, but we will be working our way Further, further west, and we want to end where this mural ends at Tucumcari. Now we've seen a lot of memorable muffler mans on this trip, including the Gemini Giant and Buck Adam and all those. But we're gonna go see another one now, unlike any we've seen yet. This one's dedicated to the Second Amendment. We've made it over to the Cadillac RV park that has the Second Amendment muffler man cowboy here. Second Amendment of the United States. He's got it written right on his shirt. Look at that. Now how big of a statement is he really making? Well, pretty big. I mean, look at the two guns right there below him. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey Scott, take a look at those. <laughs> He's over checking out the gift shop, but yeah. This place is right out by Cadillac Ranch, so they made their own little Cadillac ranch here at the RV park. They also have a plaque here. Quote by George Washington, says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. A free people ought not only be armed and disciplined, but they should have sufficient arms and ammunition 
to maintain a status of independence from any man who might attempt to abuse them, which would include their own government. George Washington. I know some people aren't going to like hearing that, but... So they do have an opening. You can actually walk up to the cars and there's a driver in every single one. So yes, let's take a look. John Wayne's in here driving this one. Inside the middle Cadillac looks like Willie Nelson to me. And then in the back one, the king, Elvis. Now let's go see the Cadillac Ranch. I'm going to tell you how that all came about. Yeah, here, biking route 66. We are headed out to Cadillac Ranch. We're gonna get some spray paint. I, I really want to spray paint this time because it looks like there are a ton of people out here too. Oh, Dang. Yeah. Um, but I want to do it because the purpose of this trip for me, other than hanging out with Scott, was uh, my friend William passed away at the uh, beginning of this year and we're gonna end up in Los Angeles for his memorial. So I want to paint a little memorial for him out here because he and I used to road trip together baseball games and things like that. Somebody forgot their shoes here on these poles, but off here in the distance, you can see there's Cadillac Ranch. I did not cue that music. They cued it themselves somehow, but there it is. For some reason, people find the need to spray paint the street and everything out here too. I don't know why. Now there's actually a truck that you can buy it from. They have commercialized this. You get lots of visitors every day. This was actually an art project from 1974. A man named Stanley Marsh III in 1974 just thought it'd be funny. So he got a bunch of Cadillacs, hired some people to come and place them face down, dig the holes, place them face down, and have something for people on Route 66 to see. And then over years, people started decorating them, spray painting them, and he thought that was just great. <laughs> Hey, Mike Scott, the Astros pitcher's here. So my buddy William Mancha, the entire time I knew him, lifelong Dodger fan, even had Dodgers tattooed across his forearm, and he was always wearing blue and white. So we're gonna go ahead and get blue and white spray paint today and leave a little memorial for Will. I will actually, uh, I'm gonna dig up a photo, because I know he has it. I just recently saw it of Will out here at Cadillac Ranch. Yeah. You're an odd one on this one, Scott, because you like the idea of the cars, but you don't like the idea of the spray painting, right? Is that? Killjoy was here. They have 10 Cadillacs out here. Oh, I was wondering why everybody was just doing these. Look at all the mud. Crap. No, I think it's mud, actually. We didn't come all the way out here for nothing. We're going to do it. Nothing illegal about it. Oh, let me deal them kind of inside. <laughs> oh, man. There's some cool stuff on some of this too. We're gonna put William Mancha right there. It's gonna live on for a little bit. Would have been a little better if it wasn't so muddy on six out of eight. What can you do? We're gonna really get it dark. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and write his name in there. Right here. So keep in mind when you come out here, people don't finish their cans, so there's a, a lot of extra cans. Well, as muddy as it was, we did it. <laughs> Good luck to anybody else that comes out here today. Go look at some of the art, at least do a walk by. Cause that one's got a cool skull in there. Yeah, if you look online, you can actually find photos and I think video footage of the uh, the cranes dropping these in and him out here watching it with a big smile on his face. <laughs> but a lot of people stop, so it's worth it, I think.
Welcome to Vega. Check out the old, old Route 66 service station. Isn't that great? I don't think we've seen one quite like this yet. This one actually has stuff all inside, like a museum. It's Dot's Mini Museum. Collection is a tribute to the mother road of an era that was busy and alive. That's neat, look at that. Says this station was originally built along the Ozark Trail, the dirt road that connected Vega with Amarillo and Adrian. The Ozark Trail that would become Route 66 turned north. What is now the four-way stop at the intersection of Vega Boulevard and US 385. When Route 66 was commissioned, 1926 station stood ready to serve the first travelers of this highway. Route 66 was developed by Cyrus Avery and connected existing roads through the main streets of towns along its path from Chicago to Santa Monica, giving it the name America's Main Street. This is a great little place. As you can see, travelers still passing by. And they have a really amazing museum across the street called the Milburn Price Culture Museum. And on the back side of the station, they even have one of the arrows. I love those. Look at this thing. Holy moly. There's some interesting stuff over here. The Milburn Press Cultural Museum. In fact, right on the other side of this sign, look what they have. They're showing where the equity bar was. And they even have a thing where you can put your phone there for a photo. But it's Billy the Kid. How cool is that? Mural of Billy the Kid with a dog asleep in the corner. Now what I want to know is who's the guy that's staring at him? Who are you, fella? Why do you look like you're going to draw? I didn't know we'd be going to the bar with Billy the Kid. Where's Scott when you need him? Giant brand, branding iron. I was over there looking at Billy the Kid hanging out at the bar and I'm wondering where the heck is Scott? <laughs> where were you? I was enjoying the shade. Yeah, no joke. It's pretty hot out here on the uh, Route 66 trail. Humid. That's cool. That is really cool. Let's go on in. Thank you. Do it, Scott. Do it. You can do this. Making a postcard. And the wealth for yourself. Yeah, leave that there. And it's built in 1896, so you're definitely not going to break it. That's awesome. Yeah, I want to do one. Okay. This is great, thank Pull you. it backwards, start spinning. Not that bad. is For killer. Years old. That's yeah. awesome, man. Thank you. They got a wind turbine out there we can walk through <laughs> with a mural. Here's the postcard we just made. Pretty rad. This exhibit's on the Alamo. Interesting. Right here. Picture of the interior. Yeah, all these guns were supposedly used out of the Alamo in this case. Looks like they got part of a church over here. And part of a restaurant. An old popcorn machine. Still works. Two nickels. All the historic sites. I'm wearing the blue Wheel of Catusa shirt. And we're going there today. There's some devil's rope. We went to that museum the other day. Now we're gonna walk out here to the wind turbine. Cause we saw that as we were driving by, Scott's like, what is that, a big plane or something back there? I said, ah, we'll see, we'll see. Another really cool free museum on the trail. Vega, Texas. This should be cool. 
Oh, wow. Whoa. They've cut holes so you can feel the wind blowing through it. Another thing I didn't know I would see on this trip. Very cool. Oh, look at this guy. Definitely worth a stop on Route 66. Milburn Price and Culture Museum. And they do have a couple of places to shop here. A couple of trading posts and antique vintage stores. I like that old signage. What the heck do we have here? Who's this guy? Who's this rooster with the sunglasses? I don't know what happened to this old cafe. It just says very faded cafe around the front, but look at that old Pepsi mural. I love that. Even with the broken windows, it just looks very cool. Very Route 66 rustic. in Adrian, Texas, home of the Matadors. Man, that definitely used to be something sad. Look at this one. Not open any longer, but they still have some of the old gas pumps. That's kind of cool. I love that old rusty Coke machine there. There, yeah, that's what we're looking for. We are at the Midpoint Cafe. Appropriately named because we are at the midpoint of our journey. You can see over here a sign and a line by this American flag that says the midpoint of Route 66. How cool. So you can actually have a little platform you can climb up here and take your photo. We're at the midpoint! The halfway! We made it halfway! The Midpoint Cafe is kind of a big deal because this is the uh, one of, another one of the inspirations from cars from this diner. We're walking the Midpoint. And look, you can put your <laughs> put your face in there. I got pie faced at the Midpoint. This is located at the exact geomathematical center of Route 66 one of the earliest eateries on the highway. Oh, neat. Oh, Scott's already got us a table over there. Oh, this is awesome. I love it. I'll sit with this guy. What did you say they have on the menu? Fried bologna sandwiches, count me in. Little corner of tchotchkes over here, Coca-Cola and Big Boy. They got some fresh pie over there. Oh, I can't wait. Chicken salad sandwiches, hamburgers, hot dogs, grilled ham and cheese, black bean burger. I have to find out more about this midpoint ugly pie. If you've been following us on our Route 66 journey, you know that we actually ended up a day behind schedule because of my car dying. So I was kind of afraid that, um, I thought I had checked this place was gonna be closed today, so we're just gonna be showing you from the outside, but I was super excited to see it's open today and we got here. I went ahead and ordered a root beer float. They said they have a gift shop, so let's see that while we wait for our food. And appropriately so, they sell all of the vehicles from cars. <laughs> All of your favorite characters from Radiator Springs. Definitely gonna have to get some postcards here. Midpoint postcards, those are great. There's a couple cool ones. Some drawings. Elvis. <laughs> All right, my root beer float is here. I love a good root beer float. So far so good, pretty tasty. Neither Scott or I could finish it, not because they weren't good, they were just so filling and we have been eating this heavy food for <laughs> days, so we both just tapped out. Oh cool, they Burma shaved their intro, or their the welcome to their place. Good meal, Midpoint. Well, it's been a fun stop here at the Midpoint Cafe and visiting this town of Adrian, but we gotta get going. We gotta move along. Hey Scott, you know what's next? 
talk to me. Getting out of Texas. Time to go to New Mexico. Alrighty, here we go. We have kind of a long way to go before we really see anything next, so we kick back and enjoy the ride for a while. So we've just entered the town of Glen Rio, and Glen Rio is, it's kind of divided. It's Texas, and then it's Glen Rio, New Mexico. So as we're going through this town, it, you know, you cross the borders. Now that was important because the whole town's gone. This, this is the gas station. This is like pretty much what we're gonna see the whole town. It's all just lost by the wayside. But I made a whole video about it last time I was here with Scott. And I was just fascinated by this town because at one time it was a bustling town. And what they said when I read up on it was that gas was only sold on one side. I think it was the New Mexico side because Texas charged more on tax. And then they only sold alcohol on one side because uh, there were certain days they couldn't sell it, so they just only sold it on one side. And so the, it was like a kind of crazy town that people inhabited. And it was passerbys coming through constantly. And then when the freeway came and bypassed it, it all turned into stuff like this. So let's go see what's left. I mentioned in previous videos I had watched a documentary on uh, Old Route 66. It was made like in the 90s with Peter Fonda. And he goes out to a place we're going to see today that's, you know, it's completely falling apart. But when he went, it was still a bit thriving business. Man, Glen Rio. Whew. Looks like part of it they've put lines in since we were here last. I don't remember them being that bright about a year and a half ago, two years ago. Let's check this place out up here on the right. This is one of the places Peter Fonda visited. Yeah, it's crazy when he came out here, this was still kind of still operating, kind of still functioning. And then this business was still open. I believe it was a cafe at the time. I love the architecture of these buildings, so it's cool to see they're still out here, but kind of sad that what once was a town that people were actually living in is just, you know, just very few left. Population probably in the 20s, 30s maybe. Probably used to be an advertisement right there. This is a prime example as to what happened when Route 66 got bypassed for the new freeways. Lots of places just turned into this. Just telling Scott, you know, it's so sad you see these and you're like, man, probably a lot of people had a lot of cool conversations having lunch at that little cafe. And you can clearly tell this would have been the cafe and garage part and the motor court would have been over there. You can see the, the main building and all the smaller ones. Something's happening out here bulldozers you can see where the old gas pumps were right here that's crazy though look all the door handles and everything are gone but the door is still there I think we can just help ourselves here can't really hurt yourself in here There's a face in here. Somebody created a face. This place is pretty cool, Jordan. Yeah. Glen Rio. Let's see what else is in this town, what's left. 
I'm proud to report that something's happening here. This is a new building. They're trying to create something here right next to a destroyed building. And they have a uh, little Glen Rio vehicle out here on display. Piece of the roof hanging there. But yeah. Oh, it's for a smoke shop. You know how I could tell? I found myself high in the desert. Whoa. Just a facade now. I feel like there was more last time I was here. I bet there was. You'll have to look up my old video in Glen Rio and see. But that's definitely new. Yeah, they must be doing some sort of roadside stop. Here's another set of buildings and stuff we explored last time. Let's check this out. Yeah, if you're coming out here to do this kind of stuff, definitely uh, be weary of snakes and things like that. But something used to go on here. Look, they have like a, a ring, something, a little cafe or something. I'm being as careful as possible. Don't worry. Glen Rio something. You can still see it says Glen Rio on there. Whoa, wowza. Careful of this one. There's something. Oh, there's like a burned out car in the back. And another piece of a building over there. And that building back there. A little urban exploring today. Oh boy, the rest of the building fell down. And there's something else over here. Looks like it's already fallen though. And then this is what's fallen behind the building we were just in. Try and make our way back through all this safely. That's kind of cool. Or interesting anyway. More along the Mother Road. The Bumpy Mother Road. Last time we took Route 66 further up this way, but it looks like they're doing some work on the town from what we've seen, maybe. And they don't allow any through traffic right here, but last time we drove right through it. That's all right, our next stop is gonna detour off Route 66 anyway, so we're gonna hit the uh, next stop now. Our time zone has just changed because we are entering New Mexico. Land of enchantment. So since we got detoured, I stopped at the Glen Rio Visitor Center and look at what they have on display. So here they have an advertisement for a museum locally, the Dinosaur Museum of Tucumcari, and they have a bronze cast of a brontosaurus hip bone with teeth marks and bite holes from a man-eating dinosaur. So look at that. Isn't that crazy? Even from a distance you can see those. There's a hole. Here's the bite marks, teeth marks there. 